you're saying in three, four years, you guys have grown to, you know, and, and obviously numbers aren't everything, but I know for someone listening, I just want to give them context. Like what, sure. what are you guys, what's your revenue looking like right now? Yeah. So we're doing anywhere between like three, four million a year. Um, but that's, that's just now, um, since three, four years ago, we've probably done somewhere around like eight, nine million dollars in revenue. But if you include like all of the outside stuff that we do with like the teaching and courses and things of that nature, we're, we're probably a little bit over uh, a little bit over 10 uh, or excuse me, 10 million bucks. So. Sheesh. All right. So y'all have heard it. Justin Phillips, Justin P. You know, yeah. Uh, our history goes back. <laughs> About 10 years now, yeah, about 2000. It had to be 11. 12. When were you out? Yeah, I, I went there in 2011. 11, yeah. So 10 years, 11 years ago now. Years. Wow. Um, I, I had an intern at the time who's now like a boss CEO, Farron Moon. Yeah. I was like, Farron, I need a marketing intern. And she was like, yo, there's this guy at Howard. He's like the guy. Everybody knows him as the marketing guy. Mm-hmm. So we set up the meeting. And you had been to the studio before as well um, yeah. with, with some artists. And we go through and we're talking and I was like, all right, what's your name? And you're like, I hold nation. And I was like, what, <laughs> what is your name? And you're like, I hold nation. And when you left, I was like, yo, Farron, there's no world where I hire anybody whose name is I hold nation. What I'm gonna do, like introduce them to my brand partners is like, I hold nation. Oh my God. But, you know, I want to say now, 11 years later, probably one of the biggest <laughs> mistakes I made because had you joined the team, I'd probably be a billionaire and you'd oh. be a you know, it's like, you know, I missed out on one oh, of the greatest marketing minds that I know. Um, but it worked out because I think had you joined, you may not have been doing what you're doing now and we wouldn't no. be on this. So exactly. Uh, but uh without further ado, Justin Phillips. Yeah. Welcome to the twenty four seven artist podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, a million times over a pleasure, especially just to reconnect. If we don't get into anything else besides us just talking and chopping it up, I'm cool. But of course, we're gonna drop some gems as well. But it's a pleasure, brother. I appreciate the invite. Absolutely. So you know, obviously, I I know you and know of you, but for someone who's listening and they're like, all right, so you know, I'm I'm here. I want to learn this guy. You're you're saying he's the guy. Tell tell the people listening a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So name's Justin Phillips. I co-own a brand called Support Black Colleges. Our mission is to raise awareness, uplift and inspire folks to go to HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, for those that don't know. And we just happen to do it through clothing. We like to make timeless clothing for our HBCU students and graduates and high school kids as well. Um, Other than that, I do most of the strategy, digital marketing, manufacturing, vendor relationships, all of the stuff that is Right after social media and after I do that, but I do contribute on the front end side of social media as well, because that's where I come from. Um, but other than just support by colleges, I just do strategy, marketing, scaling your business. And then we also teach and help people how to do the same thing we've been able to do as well. So that's kind of what I got going on. Dang. I mean, you I, I need to learn how to introduce myself like you because you <laughs> nailed it on the head and you probably didn't even do enough justice because I you know. <laughs> Support black colleges. I, I play NBA 2K and, and I remember the first time oh, I pulled man. it up and I seen someone walking around the park in NBA yeah. 2K with a support black colleges uh, hoodie on. And I was like, yeah. yo, like that is massive. You're with the right. Nike and boom, like the biggest clothing brands in the world. And here there was a week where I feel like you guys were the number one clothing option on the game. So like you're, you know, a lot of us have screen printed and have shirts but what you are doing is like at a level i've never seen anyone do starting you know small so kind of walk us through that journey of like how yeah. do you start support black colleges starting um so it's actually interesting i didn't even start it myself my business partner uh corey he has a, a cousin uh, named kai and they actually started together back in 2012. so corey went to howard university Kai was, didn't go to school with us, but he was just a really good designer. So Corey was like, yo, I want to do something for the kids on campus, HBCU kids. We need to make something like to support these people. So he uh, he was on the like executive board for the North Carolina club. I was on the executive board for the Texas club because in HBCUs, they do that. And I think they do that in regular school uh, PWIs as well. But 
they uh, his cousin designed merch for the North Carolina club and he designed merch for the Texas club. But then people were like, yo, this stuff is dope. Like y'all need to make some stuff like for regular. So we was like, all right, we need to. Well, Corey was like, we need to make some stuff for just to support black colleges in general. Started with a T-shirt. Then that went to people wanting, yo, I want something specifically for North Carolina a and I want something specifically for Howard. Then that kind of branched out there. And then um, I actually what didn't get involved into in the business until 2018. I was just uh, being a good friend, supporting Corey. Um, first photo shoot, if you scroll back to the first post on Support by Colleges, it's a picture of me in a Support by College T-shirt. And I just wanted to help out, gave him uh, uh, Twitter made them a Twitter grew it a couple hundred followers using my marketing background, helped them with the Instagram as well. And just said, here you go, bro, have at it, do your thing. And then after, you know, some years went by, they kind of did it, didn't do it, went back and forth. Corey got a job, didn't have a job, things of that nature. And then he called me in like 2017, 2018. It was like, yo, bro, I really want to pick this up, man. Um, I'm out here in Atlanta. You, come join me and let's do this together. And I was like, you know what, bro? Um, I don't got nothing to lose. Don't got no kids. Uh, I had just quit my job and was doing some social media marketing stuff to just survive. And um, I was like, man, let me well, whatever. And I just went down to Atlanta. And then 2018, we started full time. And then from 2018 until now, that's what the four, three, four years when everything started to really go crazy. That is that is amazing. So you're saying in three, four years, you guys have grown to, you know, and, and obviously Numbers aren't everything, but I know for someone listening, I just want to give them context. Like what, sure. what are you guys, what's your revenue looking like right now? Yeah. So we're doing anywhere between like three, 4 million a year. Um, but that's, that's just now, um, since three, four years ago, we've probably done somewhere around like eight, $9 million in revenue. But if you include like all of the outside stuff that we do with like the teaching and courses and things of that nature, we're, we're probably a little bit over, uh, a little bit over 10, uh, or excuse me, 10 million bucks. So. Sheesh. All right. So y'all have heard it. So <laughs> this is not advice coming from somebody who's just starting out or just has an idea. This man is executed. I've seen it firsthand executed at the highest level, humble and, and I love that teaching is at the core of what you guys do. And that's actually like, I think the first time I saw your picture was for the, uh, the ebook that you put together, oh, okay. and I downloaded it. Um, and I learned a lot again, you know, my, my history with screen printing, obviously, you know, how studios was, was our, our company right. at our house shirts. Um, but I will honestly say I probably gave away five times, whatever I sold. Um, <laughs> I was a horrible, uh, person in the merch game, but, uh, you can't go too many festivals or places without seeing a house shirt. So the market right. worked. I just never, I didn't make nowhere close to ten million dollars <laughs> with my merch line. Um, but but I think up. that's that's amazing, man. So like, you know, so I went to a, a HBCU for one year. I went to UMES uh, oh, out wow. in Maryland, um, and and I know it's a culture. So you know, you guys not only launched this clothing line you not you launched it in a niche that was definitely overlooked like before right. this brand i think outside of wearing an actual like howard or hampton or you know morehouse sweater right there was nothing that took this collective and put it in one place so you right. guys did it i think the timing of it was amazing 2018 yeah um but you also took a risk right so you, you right. quit your job you move down to atlanta you guys start this thing Walk me through like your early steps of like, all right, so now I'm, I'm starting a clothing line. What what's step one? Yeah, that was a that was a tough one. So what happened was I had the job that I had. I was living in a one bedroom apartment with like four or five people. Um, my and I didn't I did that by choice because I didn't have to. Um, my cousins had hit me up and was like, yo, we need somewhere to stay. Can we live with you? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. So I had my marketing job that I got out of college. I was getting four thousand bucks a month, but I was spending maybe a thousand dollars a month. Um, and rent was two fifty because I was splitting it with four people. And then food, you know, that maybe got up to a thousand bucks. So I was saving about two, three thousand dollars a month, stack that up to um, about twenty six thousand dollars. And then that's when Corey called me and he was like, yo, come down, let's do this, whatever. And I was like, cool. So I took sixteen thousand in 2017 and invested it in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, um, just because I believed in a technology uh, back then. And I've, I haven't sold. I've just been holding that since the day that I got into it. Um, and then the other ten thousand that I had after that sixteen, because I had twenty six. Um, I moved down to Atlanta with Corey and he's like, yo, 
he counted up all the inventory. He was like, I got $20,000 in inventory. And I was like, well, I got $10,000 in my pocket, but I didn't tell him that. And then he was like, you know, give me, wire me 10 K and we're 50, 50 business partners. And let's just go from there. And I was like, cool. Wired him to 10,000. Uh, after that, I had like two pennies left in my bank account and I have a screenshot uh, of it to just always remind me. And then from there, that's when we really started grinding. And, um, the first month into the business, we did uh, $30,000 in revenue. Second month we did 65, thousand um and just getting started the reason i told that backstory is because i think it's important to talk about what i did right when we first got started and right when we moved down i gave Corey all this money and i had nothing left and i literally did not know how i was going to pay rent like feed myself like nothing at all so i got blessed like randomly i remember i was crying bro like one of my boys like yo i just saw you move to atlanta um how's everything going i was like man i ain't gonna lie like it's stressful out here so, and he just sent me 250 dollars, and i didn't even ask so like blessings like that like really carried me through the first few months um and during those first few months what we really focused on was i literally just learned everything that I need to know about paid advertising, Facebook, Instagram, uh, influencer marketing, grassroots marketing, going out and vending at different locations, and then also content creation and content curation. So for the first 90 days of starting the business, I did not leave my room at all. Um, the only time I left maybe was to go network at the gathering spot, you know, like a WeWork type of vibe. And um, that's where I was doing my networking. But other than that, learning 14 to 16 hours a day, and then taking that information and then immediately executing on it. Because I believe that there's like, two seasons in business, the season of information and the season of execution. Most people get too stuck in the season of information and never execute. So I was taking immediate information and immediately executing. And that's what I was doing for the first 90 days. And those are the four things I was focusing on to grow and scale the business. Damn, bro. I, I could end the podcast right now. And you know, <laughs> because like it's, <laughs> you know, my wife, got me to understand the word I should use. I used to tell people it's easy, but it's not easy. It's yeah, simple. simple. It's, it's yeah. very simple, but it's hard. Like, right. you know, man, kudos to you because I know the feeling we duplicated it. When we started house studios, we borrowed $800 wow. from a family member. We didn't have a dollar to my name. We had a five-year-old. My wife mm -hmm. just moved up from Atlanta. We were dating at the time. So we weren't even married. Wow. Borrowed 800 bucks. And we put all 800, not 799, all 800 <laughs> into the business to right. show value to our partners right? and had no money. And we basically right. had 30 days to figure it out. And, and, and so what that does is it, it creates a sense of urgency yeah. where you, you're not, you don't have the luxury of, of figuring it all out. You're like, right. I, I've learned something. I'm going to try it now. Right. If I fail, how can I do it better next time? And if it works, do that again. Exactly. <laughs> right. So like that was so when people like, oh, man, like you guys are so it's like, no, I'm not smart. Like right. it had to work because right. like, I can't look stupid. Like I'm not I can't go back. And right. like I've got this woman here with her with her daughter. Right. And I, you know, <laughs> so for you, the same like no kids. But at the end of the day, it's like, yo, you had twenty six thousand. Right. Kudos right. to you. any young any person at any age can save over ten thousand dollars is amazing. Mm -hmm. but you took that and you invested a portion of it. So you were thinking long term. So respect there and the balance, which you could have easily said at, at you know, all in a thousand dollars a month in living. I've got 10 months of, of reserves, all right. but all of it. Mm -hmm. wired it so you showed value to your partner Corey you said look I may I'm bringing my expertise but here's 10k I'm now 50 50. right now you're like I have to make this thing work no choice it, no the, choice. And a, quote, a quote one of my one of my good homies always says he says it has to work or it has to work and that that, that, that that's it I didn't that's have a choice work. yep so Man, that shit so first 90 days you do that mm -hmm. you guys it but you know, even with the revenue you just said, like you guys started with a bang. So, so walk me through kind of like, all right, 10 K's in two pennies in a bank, homie wires you two fifty. again, right. blessings, blessings right. follow faith. <laughs> now, like what's that first 30 days for you? How do you guys get people right. to buy this product in the first 30 days? Great question. So first thing I did immediately was I went to YouTube university and started just studying anybody that I could, but quickly I started to realize that now I see it hindsight is that most people struggle with trying to figure out who to follow and who to listen to because they see this person's doing something. They're doing that. They're telling me to do this. They're saying do that. That contradicts this. I don't know what to do and I'm stuck. So what I had to do was a, a few things. I had to 
identify someone and I vetted that person out and I vetted out to make sure that they have been where I wanted to go and that they were doing something that I wanted to do. Because I think that even when you talk about like courses and things of that nature, uh, the definition of a course is a direction to get me to a destination that I want to go to. So I didn't have any money to do so because I think you either have you know, two things, you either have more time or more money. And at that point I had more time. So I had to invest that time to be able to make money. And if I had more money, then I could have invested that money to buy myself more time. So in the early stage, that 90 days, I invested all of my time (laughs) because that's all I had in learning information. But I saw that what was happening was, is like, I was learning so much, but I wasn't executing anything. And I was like, okay. And something came in my heart. It was like, if you don't do execute this information now, you're never going to do it. And I was like, oh, wow. So what I did was I said, you know what? Scrap watching everybody. I'm going to find one person, see that they're doing what I want to do. Make sure that I copy exactly what they do word for word, but only change the small nuances to make it fit for my business. And then I'm going to immediately apply it after I learn it. And I'm not going to even think about the results. So Um, You know, we had a few bucks uh, in in the account from what I had invested. So I watched this guy. uh, He actually uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, His name's King Calm on YouTube. And he was just a a Shopify dropshipping YouTube guy and watched him. And I applied exactly what he said. And it took me some weeks because I was struggling going back and forth with myself. Oh, I can't waste this money and boom, like stuff like that. So I was spending $50 a day on my first ad campaign and Immediately spending that money, I was able to forex our uh, our ad spend. So I was like, okay, I'm putting in fifty and I'm getting two hundred back. Let's keep that going. And then also in that first ninety days, we started experiencing with influencer marketing, and that's when we paid the shade room fifteen hundred dollars back then when they weren't you know taxing. And that shade room post went from fifteen hundred to a thirty thousand dollar you know payday. And I was like, oh, twenty twenty thirty thousand. I was like, okay, that's crazy. Let's let's keep pouring get the fire on the paid ads. Let's keep pouring fire on the influencers. Then also there it was October, November. So this is homecoming season. So I'm like, well, if I want to get in front of my target demographic, I can pay Facebook and Instagram to show that to my people or I can go to where my people are and show myself to them. And we went to seven homecomings that first year, me and Corey in a um in a in his car, uh, you know, driving, <laughs> driving to Howard, drove to Norfolk, put all of the stuff in the back, and we was just selling. And uh, also, I think at that time we had got rented a Sprinter van, or we bought one. I, I don't remember now, but that was the grassroots part. And then the last part was content. You know, we we started posting at least one time a day trying to educate or entertain our audience so that we become a hub for them to come and receive information for the things that they care about, which happen to be HBCUs, Black history, Black excellence, et cetera. And then now when they think Black news, they think support Black college Instagram, but then we just happen to sell clothing. So we're more of a media company than we are a clothing brand. And that was like the first 90 days was just all of that straight, that and nothing else. It's funny because you know me from school too, where like, they're like, oh, he's the party guy. He's like this and that. I came to Atlanta and Corey was like, bro, who are you? Like, you're completely different. I'm in my room 16 hours a day. Didn't come out. Didn't want to go nowhere. But it's because I had my back against the wall, like you said. So I didn't have a choice at that at that moment. Damn. Bro, <laughs> your story, you, you got to write a book, like a book. Uh, I mean, you've read a book, but you got to write a book about yourself because like... <laughs> You are the blueprint, man, for like the American dream and why, like, you know, if you if you put in the work and you just do do the steps, it it mm-hmm. works out. Like, I've, I've mm-hmm. never seen it not work for someone who tries, like, because right. even when you fail, you learn and you get better for the next thing. But, right. you know, that that's a beautiful thing, man. So, like, you're using some words that I want to make sure we, we, we double down on, sure. like, so grassroots, right? Like getting yeah. in the car, the option of. I could spend money on Facebook, right? Time and money, the, the uh-huh. two variables. I could spend the money on Facebook and get in front of a targeted group. Right. Or I could physically go where I know they're going to be there together, amped up in the spirit exactly. and just have the product in the back. Yep. And and that choice of going physically is so powerful, right? Because now they're seeing you, you're talking, you're sharing stories. You went to an HBCU, exactly. so you know, the, the competitive rivalry of who's better and all that. <laughs> right. At the end of the day, it's a lot easier to get someone to give you a dollar amount when you're in their face and right. you're excited as opposed to, oh, there's an ad and there's a cool shirt. Should I right. 
my taking my credit card and putting it on this thing now. So I love that. And then obviously every time someone buys one, they now walk around college and someone's like, yo, like, where'd you get that from? Exactly. There's a much higher chance of someone seeing someone else wear it to say, let me take my credit card and go buy what they have because I want it as well. So yeah. brilliant, yeah. you know, going to seven schools. So I'm pretty sure at this point, y'all not flush with cash. So, you know, <laughs> you guys are thugging it out. You're driving a car, you're, you're eating bad, you're, right. you're keeping where you can. Right. The payoff is worth it. So when your success comes and people are like, man, of course it's successful. It's like, I know you probably chuckle to yourself because you're in your mind, you can't get away from right. how many people are willing to do what we did early exactly. on yeah. to make exactly. sure this thing works. Yeah. Man, then the shade room ad, right? So like, you know, now influencer and digital marketing and these branded paids make sense, but you guys did it at a time when that wasn't the norm. Right. For brands, right. That wasn't, if there was no proven success, you couldn't really duplicate and say, I'm just going to do what they did. So right. that was really ingenious on your part too. And then I love the fact that you said we're a media company that happens to sell clothing, right? right. So the success was a guarantee because you're using these digital platforms, yeah. creating content that connects and resonates whether you want a shirt or not. And if you ever happen to buy a shirt, doesn't matter because I've got your attention and the value right. of your attention is worth more oh than my God. clothing. Priceless, so, brother. Man, you you guys, man, I, like I said, y'all, y'all, y'all <laughs> set the bar. No, I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so now let me uh, let me kind of pivot to if you are an artist, right? So yeah. a lot of the people watching this are going to be rappers, singers, producers, and you want to sell merch as one of your revenue streams. Yes. Um, what advice do you give to that artist? Let's and let's just use me for an example, right? I have four thousand followers on Instagram. I'm an artist. I have friends, family. What, what do I do if I want to sell merch? Yeah, so if I'm an artist, first of all, there's a few things there, bro. Oh, that's a good one. Because what I always struggle with is like the artist and the, the business side and the creative side. First things first is we got to tap into the self-awareness. We got to figure out if you are the type of person that should be trying to run and manage a merch type of business in general anyways. And if that's something that you're willing to handle, because what I hate and I hate this for artists in general is when they're like, they want to make money, but then they go and make money. And then it takes them away from the artistry as well. And you have to have that tough balancing act of like going in between both. But if you do do that self-awareness and you realize that you have what it takes to run a merch kind of company until you can be able to pass it off. Or you feel like you are the type of person that has an, enough business acumen to be able to handle it and try to do that balancing act. Then first thing you're going to want to do is um, I recommend using Shopify, starting a, starting a Shopify website. Um, there's a bunch of free, free themes and templates that you can use relatively cheap, 29 bucks a month and getting some good designs. I can drop some, some game on that as well. Um, because one of the biggest things, especially for merch, is for artists, you're going to have to have tough designs, especially if they're going to just be, you know, your name or whatever. Most people won't want to support something that, I mean, obviously your friends and family might, but anyone that's just outside that doesn't know you, you got to have something that's really, really nice for them to want to support just your name. Uh, so what I recommend doing is uh, when I go on Instagram, you can go into the search on Instagram and then just type in period like dot std and then it's going to show you a bunch of people because that those are people that have design studios so dot std are all people that have design studios dot gfx are all people that have graphics and then dot bfx be people who do video services and whatnot but for this example you do dot std and you scroll and you're going to see hundreds of people that do fire designs and you can kind of just get lost there because these are graphic designers studio owners that are showcasing their stuff on Instagram. So you take that. Now you up's done. Those you can do on placeit.net. You can do on print the printful mockup generator. And now you got some mockups and want to have some inventory or does this person want to do type of pre-sale type of method for the person that didn't really have a choice, I probably would do a pre-sale type of method where you hype up for two, three, maybe two, three weeks that you're going to do a drop. You get the people that are following you to know and support. You go live on Instagram if that's your kind of vibe, if not cool. And then you do the drop and you only allow the website to be open for 
48, 24 to 72 hours, let them all shop. You close it and then you use that money that you made to then fund the orders that were just purchased. So you go to your screen print shop, but there's some tricks of the trade there is that when you go to the screen print shop, don't let them supply the shirts for you because you can get them yourselves and get them much cheaper and supply them to the screen printing shop. So use sites like alphabroder.com, uh, SNS Activewear, TSC Apparel, there's a bunch of them, Jiffy shirts, buy the shirts yourself and then send them to the screen printer because they're going to just buy them from those places anyways and charge you an extra one, two, three, four, five dollars and then let them print on it. And then now you can deliver it, um, you know, through your website. But just for you know the person that's just trying to start merch, most importantly is make sure that your design's good, make sure that your website is super solid. Um, and then do a pre-order method if you're cash strapped. And those are the kind of the ways to do all of that, like in a in a short, I try to keep it as short as possible. Nah, that's that's perfect, man. And again, you know, if if not if I know what Justin just said was really valuable. He he didn't want me to plug it, but I have to say, like. He has his book, the last e-commerce book you need or you'll never need. Um, I'll make sure the information's in our in our description. You know, go buy the book because he gives you these plays like all spread out. Like <laughs> it's crazy. Like when I read it, I was like, yo, like they're in business selling merch. And he literally just gave away exactly how to sell merch <laughs> to anyone else. Like he's creating competition. <laughs> but like I loved that you did it and, and the energy behind it. So, uh, you know. The, the game you just gave, I'm sure someone's going to like rewind and write down and yeah. rewind. But like, if you really want to know how to do it fully broken down, Justin and, and his partner have, have, have like a e-commerce mm -hmm. book series, right. you know, go check it out. Buy it. It's not even expensive. How much is it? It's like like 30 bucks, 30, 30 bucks. Like, yo, you, you sell two pieces of merch. You made your money back. So like, <laughs> right. Your mom and your your best friend will buy that. Like, <laughs> you know, um, but man, thank you for that. So. True. You know, obviously, and, and again, every time I speak or hear you speak, uh, I learned something new. I, I had no idea about the STD and the VFX and the VFX. So bro, that's a game to, changer, bro. So in about 30 days, when y'all see this 24-7 artist merch drop, just, <laughs> just uh, know. I was on Instagram researching that, that STD. Oh, All right, man. So like now I want to get kind of into just like marketing in general, because sure. I feel like we could talk about merch all day, but you have a book and and I'm going to, you know, if this dude was willing to send his last dime to start his company and like risk it all and have two pennies left, um, I'm challenging the artist listening to this to spend 30 bucks and go get your book and just like, you know, start a merch line. And at worst case, if you sell two, three pieces, you make your money back. Right. But again, that's my challenge to them is like, if you put in all your money and like took that risk, we're not going to give them all the gems right now. <laughs> 30. Um, so let's kind of pivot now to just mark. Cause that's my introduction to you was like, this is a marketing genius. Right. And I'm kicking myself cause I didn't hire you because I probably would have been much better off. And I would have bought Bitcoin and Ethereum in 2016, 17 as well. So bro, like, I was telling everybody, bro. I was telling all of the homies. I was like, bro, buy this right now. And no one listened to me. I was sick, bro. Man. So, so in, in the marketing space, and again, we're going to focus on like artists, right? Yeah. If I'm a new artist today, um, getting ready to, to put out a single or getting ready to put out music, just kind of walk me through. And I know you're helping, you know, your, your, your roommate, your, your homie uh, right now in some marketing stuff. So yeah. you're familiar with the rollouts. Help, help me with just kind of like, how do I approach marketing in 2022 as an artist? Great question. So from my, um, I look at it in two ways. Uh, I kind of liken a personal brand because that's what I do. And I liken it kind of to an artist as well, because an artist is just a personal brand with music attached to it, whether as I'm a personal brand with information or business attached to it. So the way that I would do so for an artist is similar to how I do so for myself. So usually what I would do is I would go and research all of the different pages and people like social media pages and people that have my direct audience. And then I would go and get and see if I can get there by their attention. I use OPA, other people's attention. And what I would do is for the pages that I'm talking about, you know, maybe black millionaires, black wealth crew, et cetera, and all of these different pages that talk about black excellence, black wealth, and some that just talk about wealth in general, et cetera. I hit them up and I say, hey, how much do you guys charge for a shout out? And then usually they'll have a rate sheet and they'll tell me how much they charge. So now 
after that, what most people do, artists and personal brands, they do wrong is they make one piece of content and then they try to just distribute it through all of these different channels. Or some don't even know about doing this. And then they just put it out to themselves and they're like, well, I didn't get famous overnight. This is an issue. And this is, this is, I've been, it's crazy, but I've been talking to my guy that works directly at Warner, another guy that works directly at, um, where does he work at? I think Epic or uh, Capital. And they were like, no, this is what they're doing on the marketing meetings. This is what they're telling us to do. So I'm like, okay, cool. So what I would do is find those pages and then hit them all up and see what my budget is. And then you know, spend that money, but you have to be contextual to each page and make content that's contextual to each one, because all of them are different. Whether as most people are just putting one piece and distributing it, you have to go and see how does black millionaires do it? How does X, Y, and Z do it? What does their content look like? And make your own content that looks like what is already being successful on those pages. And that's what, you know, that's what you want to do on that side. But for the artist, you do the same thing you, but there's a little trick to it as well. <laughs> I was actually working a uh, consultant for a homie that uh, he just got signed to a rock nation. And um, the, there's a, there's a different piece of it because what you want to do also is like, if you can in include anything that's like in these lines, like celebrity recent success or authority in general, as it pertains to an artist that can help out a lot. So for instance, if someone like you, um, cause my dog, they have a lot of connections. So someone like you that has a lot of connections, they happen to be connected to, you know, just a lot of top, though, like they had like Jay Prince and Jay Prince was connecting them to Kanye and all of these big wild people, but it doesn't have to be that. So their artist was taking pictures with Kanye and this and that person. He was like, how, how do we make this work? And I'm like, yo, pay, say cheese the you know their platform pay uh hot new hip-hop's platform pay x y and z platform and then in the caption say something about yo is is at whoever you know his name was johnny cinco is johnny cinco about to sign to good music or is he going to sign to rock nation because he has a picture with kanye and he has a picture with so-and-so now we don't care nothing about the music but we're going to his page to go see who he is and then other things will happen like you know there's uh snippets that will be played in the studio and then an artist a bigger artist might pull up so i we would use that like yo Quavo is is putting his stamp on so and so and then working distributing that through all of the pages but obviously if you're not you know someone that is connected like that you can get connected with someone and then get those connections and work it in that way it might be a little a little whatever because you know you might have to be like someone connect you and you get in the same room and then you be like Hey, so and so, like, you mind if I play my music real quick? And they like, yeah, no, maybe you play it, your homeboy record it real quick, and it's not a whole thing that's set up. But with you and your boy, like you and your person that's introducing you, but you just make it look like it was, and then you distribute that content. So for the artists, that, and then other than that, if you don't have anything else, you got to be on TikTok at least three, five, eight posts a day. Put your shit out there. And the way that you can find out what to post is it just has too much organic traffic, bro. You got to go to go on TikTok, go to the search and then use the filter. You can filter it by the last three months and then you can filter it by the most liked post. And you can just type in TikTok music, music on TikTok, artist, artist on TikTok, whatever. And then you can look at everything that's went viral in the past week, three months, nine months. And you can look at everything and then just directly copy it and then do it on your own with your own swag. And then just put out as much content every day as much as possible. And if you do that daily for 30, 60, 90 days, you are, I can almost guarantee you that you're going to go viral if you post three to eight times per day on TikTok with things that are already working. So Man, y'all better blame Justin. I'm about to be out here with my MPC <laughs> on TikTok producing, producing talk. And man, I, again, like you're a godsend. I, I pray the the artists listening to this follow what advice you're giving because I learned something. Like I said, every not just every time you speak in general, like every time you spoke in in this convo, I pick something new up. I had no oh, idea wow. about the filters and the TikTok. Like you know, I, I but but it's amazing, man. And then the the other people's attention, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I want to make sure people are clear too, because I know the the trolls are gonna get in there and be like, oh, all he's doing is say copy other people. Like if you look at the people who are doing it at the biggest level yeah. in any industry, 
they are copying other people, right? Um, like when Marvel started doing the superhero thing and everyone was making fun of it, it was like, oh, superhero, superhero. Once that thing worked, every <laughs> movie studio was like, yo, we got to do some, our version. Right. <laughs> so it's like in, in basketball, with tennis shoes, like doesn't matter what, with computers, with phones, they literally are watching, oh, okay, the iPhone's doing this. Okay, Google's going to do that. It's like, right. so if the biggest company spending the most money with the most you know, genius people working right. are, are just copying each other and seeing what's working. Right. Who are you as an artist independent right. in your basement trying to make it to feel like, man, I'm gonna just go the complete opposite direction. <laughs> Could it? Absolutely. Like right. there's a chance. But if you know, like if Justin right. said, yo, I guarantee this is gonna work and right. it's worked for everyone you've done it for, why not do that? And then, you know, the other part of it so that the artists who are like, but I'm about my art number. It's like, but then once you have their attention, make right. your art and the ones who fall in love with that, it'll work. That's it. That's right. It. Once you have their attention, then hopefully they love your art as much as you love it. Exactly. But you got to get their attention because as long as you just playing it for you and your homeboys, it, that ain't paying no bills. Trust me. I know a lot of dope artists who are just like, hey, listen to this. And it's like, all right, what are we doing with it? Right. I'm going to put it out soon. But it's like, mm -mm. yeah, no, nah, you got to have those rollouts, bro. It's just all about the, the art. Unfortunately, the art is nothing without the people to admire, you know, like at that point, it's just art, unfortunately. So I agree with you, brother. Man, my mentor told me when I first started and I was the young, wide eyed producer <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm going to do this, do that. And he was like, you do. If it was about talent, we wouldn't be doing this. There's a seven year old that can play the cello better than we'll ever play. There's a nine year old, you know, genius pianist. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it was about the art and talent, none of us would be doing what we're doing because we're not talented. Right. He's like, so you better get out of that phase and figure out like what you're doing from a business and like hustle standpoint. Right. And that opened my eyes to like, oh, okay, it's not about how good I am as an artist or talent. Like it has an effect, but really it's all the other stuff. And then I got to sneak my goodness in there. Exactly. So, I agree. So Cause I, even when I was thinking about that real quick, I don't want to cut you off. I was going to no. say that. Um, Cause th I was thinking about that one day when I was looking at all these different artists and I was like, bro, it can't be about talent because if it was, then, this guy here probably wouldn't be, I'm like, bro. But so it's like you and everyone knows a person like that. They're extremely talented, but they don't know how to market or there's someone that knows how to market, but doesn't have the talent. And then they use their marketing skills to then be huge and they're still wide, wildly successful. So it's not about the talent, like you said. Yeah. Dang. All right. Now, and then, you know, one of the things you said in one of your lives, and if, if you aren't, by now, please pause the podcast, go follow at Justin P on <laughs> Instagram. He's on, yeah. you know, TikTok, well, you know, social media. Right. But I know you do the live on Instagram. Uh, I tune in whenever I can. It seems like in the mornings. Yeah. Uh, and you said something the other day. You said you learn business by doing business. Right. And I felt like that was like you just said it casually and I don't know how many people caught it, but like <laughs> I, I was in my office, I screamed. I was like, oh, like, yo, like, <laughs> I hope people got there because like, and I'm telling you, like, you know, I, I didn't graduate college and and, and definitely uh, right. learned by doing business. I learned through my failures. I learned by, uh -huh. I learned by, by like just doing it. And, and yeah. so forth for the artists, for the creative entrepreneurs, for the people out there who have an idea and they're listening to this, yeah. I want you to kind of expand on like, cause obviously again, you've, you've made millions now doing this. Like what's your overall arching advice for someone who's just like, all right, I have an idea and I want to start like, but they're keeping themselves from starting. What made yeah. you just like go? That's a good one. Um, well, I think what made me go was, I was more scared about being in the same place next year than I was failing and then or trying and then maybe it worked. I was like, all right, cool. I would much rather try and fail than be in the same place next year and then still complaining about never starting. Mm. And that really did not sit well with me. So that was the reason that I started. But I definitely want to hit on uh, what you brought up about like trying doing business, like you learn business by doing it. Because the, the context of that conversation was there was a young man that was like 18. And he was like, should I go to college? Should I not? And because I want to be a businessman, this and that. And I was like, well, if you want to be a businessman, you learn business by doing business. You don't learn business by going to study from someone that has never owned a business before. And if we argue the point, 
me, I spent one hundred twenty thousand dollars in debt, not scholarship to go and learn business, but didn't apply anything that I learned from school. Luckily, I'm, I, I'll never take away the network and the connections and the camaraderie and spirit. But when you're thinking about business, you want to learn from someone that has already been where you're at. When I tell my mom this all the time, I, she tried to give me some advice. I said, mom, I love you, but you aren't where I want to go. And I, I take heed to what you're saying, but I need to listen to the people that are at where I want to be at. And I think that that's a tough conversation to have, but you definitely have to do that, especially for the creative entrepreneur looking for who to, who to find and who to follow. But that the, the funny way that I say it too is like, you don't get swole by reading about pushups. Mm. You got to do them. So in life, I think that you only learn from mistakes, but fortunately we don't have to learn from our own mistakes and we'd actually be foolish if all we did was learn from our own mistakes. So I like to learn from the mistakes of others uh, from the present and from the past. I like to find mentorship in literature people and just doing things in general. So, um, you know, most people run from failure, but I think that if they can switch their mindset, because if you think about it, I was having a, I had a point in my time of business where I was like, I needed to have a very difficult conversation with somebody. And I was just trying avoiding it, avoiding it. And as I avoided it, it just got worse and worse and worse. And then when I realized one day was, Every time I have a difficult conversation, I met with a failure, something goes wrong. I live through it and I'm a better person on the other side of it. So why not run and try to hug my problems, run and try to have as many difficult conversations because on the other side of them, I'm a much better person, much stronger entrepreneur. So for those that are just trying to get started, one, you have to get uncomfortable because I think getting uncomfortable will make you realize that. I'd hate for an artist to be like, I'm so talented. I have all of this music. And then next year be in the same place that they're at. That's something that should sit well, uh, sit, uh, not sit well with them. And then other than that, knowing that you need to find the right people to follow and listen to that are already doing what you want to do, whether it's free, paid, mentorship, course, whatever. And uh, other than that, um, I think that that's, that would be my, my go-to advice for them. Man, bro. You're so wise beyond your years. Uh, it, it is a blessing to know you. I'm so glad we reconnected. For sure. um, and, and for this platform, you know, everyone that I've had on so far, I've told them like, this is not a one and done thing. This is a, a continuation. So, nice. you know, we'll have you back on for sure. Uh, anytime you're doing anything and, and anytime you just want to drop a bar, it can be a quick okay. recording and we put it out there because Dope. I feel like for the creative entrepreneurs, for the younger versions of ourselves, you know, we didn't have the tools, the resources, the opportunities that exist today. So it's like if you're young and like that 18 year old who's trying to figure it out, like it's the best time to be an 18 year old who wants to be to get in business. It's right. never been a better time <laughs> in, our, in our lifetime. So like, you know, I, I pray that the people follow you, you know, we'll have you do some more stuff with 24 seven artists. Uh, one of the things I'd love to do with you even is like as we're designing our merch, I want almost like document my process oh yeah all you like have you to get advice i I'm ready to connect with alpha bro to set up my my account <laughs> uh, i want to document the process and show people like yo this is a shopify template we picked this is right. you know, the, the the material we picked this is a screen printer this is what I'm it costs. this is and i want to show people oh it cost me this much per shirt i'm selling this much per shirt this is my right. profit this is my goal <laughs> i'm marketing it these are the cool celebrities i'm going to send it to and when they right. send it like but, you know, I want to show people that like it's it doesn't whether it's me or whether it's the 18 year old who doesn't think they can do it. Mm -hmm. We all have the same. It's a level playing field. A thousand percent. I love to be a part of that as well. Yeah. So we're we going to do that for sure. Man, we, we got to do some, you know, any way I can support you guys, you know, and, and I don't even know how because y'all are I'm learning from y'all. But just know, man, like I'm, I'm so impressed and so proud of everything. you're I doing. Appreciate it, brother. I, I'm proud of you, bro. Like. You don't even know. I want to definitely take the time to say this to you as well, but I definitely looked up to you and still look up to you. And definitely because like, I remember I was dying to get an internship anywhere, but if it was anywhere that I could go, it was house studios. And I was like, I want to have an internship here. Unfortunately, you know, the stars didn't align and uh, my name kind of ruined it, oh. but we did get to build a great relationship. And then, you know, that, that led me on my, my own path, which I'm grateful for. So, um, much kudos to you. Big love to what you're doing because this is needed for the artist, the entrepreneur, or just a regular guy trying to get started somewhere as well. So um, kudos to you. 
And thank you, brother. And yeah, like I said, I don't have too many regrets in business, but one is I should have hired Iho Nation. <laughs> Because think about it now, like you didn't hire me because of a name. <laughs> That's crazy, right? That but and, you know, like you know, not to get political, but it's it's funny, man. Like time has changed like so much. But you know, 2010 when we started, there weren't many, there weren't any other black studios in the DMV, so right. we had that. And then there weren't that many successful black businesses, right? So like I felt like I had this weight of like we have to be perfect. Oh, I see. And that's one of the things I had to learn was like, mm -hmm. no, embrace who you are, embrace your All culture, right. embrace like the things that you're ashamed of or you're afraid to show mm -hmm. are the things that make you unique and make you you. That's good. For the first few years of our business, we really hid, I think, our specialness because I was like mm -hmm. trying to be more like exactly right. Rinse and repeat. But in 2010, yeah. I could only follow Omega or Q or like right. you know, white owned established mm -hmm. studios that have been around forever. I didn't have a black studio to look at and be like, I want to be like them. There's right. Two. And so I was trying to copy them and they didn't have I ho nations. They didn't have. <laughs> uh, but when we finally did come around to embracing it and, and we worked with, with, you know, we had, a, a, we eventually had an internship program with Howard university. Oh, that's beautiful. And every year we had a slew of interns and Farron was a part of that. And we had, you know, and a lot of them now are doing their thing all around the country, yep. embracing our tie to the black young yeah. with it kids around the DMV right. was part of our secret sauce and why we were so successful. So, you know, it, that's again, we talk about like learning in business. Like that was one of my things where I was like, oh, no, like it got to a point. My wife was like, you do like what if we didn't try to be like the white businesses? What mm -hmm. if we're actually a real black business? And now okay. again, Someone's going to listen to that today and be like, you should have. But you got to understand, 10 years ago, yeah, it was almost a, a death sentence to be a black business. It was like, Definitely. wait, like, there were people who would search and go to your web page. And if the owner was black, they wouldn't go there. So, like, I wasn't on our website for the first time right. because so I had to make it seem like I, people would come to the studio and think I was an intern because I, okay. I gave them the impression that we all just worked for this bigger thing. Right, right, right. right? Hey, and the, the thing is, is that people always think that, you know, I would have made this decision if, but at the, at the time I never, like, I really want people to know that too. Like never judge a decision that you made because you made the decision based off of the information that you had at the time, not the person that you are now. So you made the best decision that you could for you, your wife and the daughter that you had. And that just happened to be, this guy cannot come here at that point. Can't have an I O nation open. The door. I, well, I support the situation because I would have been looking at myself questionable as well so I, brother I, I support it <laughs> man, but nah man Justin thank you for this bro uh, again if you aren't already following at Justin P uh, check out the last e-commerce book you'll ever need um, I'll put all that information in all the descriptions wherever you're watching or listening to this